So we did it. Yes. Well, I think we almost did it because we still have the sprint days. But on the other hand, I think if something goes wrong during the sprint days, we can always make a new sprint to resolve it. So let's just say that we did it. <laughs> Yes, um, so uh, I first would like to give you some uh, ticket breakdowns provided by a lot of different volunteers who just pretty much put all of these slides together. So if there's something that is incorrect, we will definitely correct that later in edits. So, yeah. um, so this year we have sold 1,334 uh, in-person tickets and also uh, 127 remote tickets. Uh, I would really like to use the opportunity to emphasize that this year we have lowered the ticket price by 24% compared to last year. Yes. Um, we, we really did run quite a tight budget and I have to admit that Occasionally, there were very stressful situations and moments. We didn't know whether we could make it, whether we could break even, but we are just really proud that we have made Europython more affordable, and we really hope to continue this trajectory. Yes. <laughs> and the next one is the country breakdown. I'm really happy to see Czech being on top. Um, Really, really happy to see so many um, locals joining the conference. Um, we even met people during the PyLadies social events, or PyLadies, yes, when we met the people, people, and we even met people who were joining last minutes um, because they, they just really like to be part of this, so very happy. And of course, Germany and UK is like usually the second and the third, yes. Um, so this is the gender breakdown, and this is something that we can certainly use a lot of improvement on. Um, I do believe, if I remember correctly, we have a slight decrease in terms of uh, female and non-binaries and other genders in terms of percentages compared to last year. Um, so. We are here, we'd like to hear how we can make improvements um, to increase diversity. Um, in terms of remote participation, this year, um, again, we, are, we, are, we consider remote participation to also be when, you, when you're joining from your hotel, when you're joining from the hallway, and when you're interacting with each other, both uh, on Discord, um, and on YouTube. So this year, we have a very good bot um, that, uh, so on, this, on Discord, we have a lot of, a lot of users, around 1,100, so almost all of the participants have joined our Discord. Um, we also have a lot of Discord messages, around 5,000 messages, and I always think that a good portion of these messages are about food. Um, but um, genuinely, I think we learned a lot about catering, and thank you so much for your great feedback. I do hope that we have made improvement over the days in terms of food, and I really hope that you can come back again next year um, and test whether what we have learned will be put into good use. Yes. And uh, on YouTube, um, we are again very proud that we are giving the um, live streams for free and open to public. So during the last uh, three days, we had over 10,000 views and 2,000, well, that's actually watch hours and no messages, but somebody can edit that out. But I think this is a really good number. Everybody is learning and sharing with each other. Um, and I think we have a really strong program this year. Uh, we had record high numbers of proposals, 633, and we also received um, a record high number of 
community votes, around 30,000. Um, we have 187 speakers, 142 talks, and 22 tutorials. And something that I think, again, we could really use improvement on is the number of speakers that identify from underrepresented groups. We have, put, we have done um, quite a lot in mentorship program, but still, we really want to do better. So please find us and tell us what we should do. Give us suggestions and help us. And again, this year we have so many events outside of the main program. We have Transcode, Beginner's Day Snake Workshop, and Humble Data Workshop, um, WASM, WASM Summit, Women in AI Mentor Sprints, the AI Game Tournament that you just saw, um, and the and we also have some socials, such as the Pi Ladies Lunch, the People Meetup, and, the, and, the, so, and, the, and tonight we will have the Pi Ladies Social. Um, I, I really want to use the opportunity to mention that this is something that we have been wanting to do for quite a few years, to include more different kind of events apart from the main program. We would like to have ideas, such as last year we had a really nice Makers Fest, and this year we had several ideas, but it, many of them didn't materialize. So if you have ideas about what else to do during the Euro Python days in the next years, please come and talk to us. We like to have more fun and more creative moments during the event. Um, we, and this year we have a budget of 25,000 euros for financial aid. Um, I think we have a record high of ap applicants as well, about 200, and they're from 50 countries. Um, the, <laughs> yes. um, so we, out of the Accepted ones will have 57 part participants, and 62% of uh, these applicants are from underrepresented groups. 30% of these are actually our speakers, and we, in addition, we also have um, given 50 remote um, finite grants. Um, in addition to the fin financial aid, we also provided the mentorship program. So we matched, uh, so for each mentees who apply to join the mentorship, we have found one mentor to help because they are generally first time speakers, especially most of them are from underrepresented groups. And we have received overwhelmingly positive feedback. And we would love to continue this. And I am very proud this year that we are able to provide childcare again. And this year I added one, uh, one additional room because apparently it's getting quite popular and we didn't have, one room wasn't enough. And I was particularly happy that uh, a, um, somebody named, a kid named Robin, you, which who you might know, is really always looking forward to coming to EuroPython because how much fun he has at EuroPython's childcare rooms. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, and of course, uh, it, is, it is not an easy task to come to a country where like most of us don't really speak the language and to find a childcare provider who can provide childcare services to children with many different languages. It was a very challenging task, but we are really happy that we found a, a very nice company who is very supportive of us, who provided us so many different language pairs. Um, I'd just like to thank uh, Susie, babysitter, who has been just incredibly helpful for us, yeah.
and the next one is code of conduct. This year we have received three code of conduct incidents, all of which have been resolved fairly quickly. Uh, I am not going to go into any details at the moment because all of the details are uh, fully with the Code of Conduct Committee, and the committee will provide a full transparency report after the conference, and you're very welcome to read them and provide us feedback. <laughs> and as I mentioned uh, in the opening, the conference is organized by the Europython Society, and we are the oldest and longest running volunteer-led Python programming conference on the planet. And um, I would, if you enjoy the conference, I would urge you to become a member, to be more involved, to help us organize conferences, to help us get better at connecting with the community. And the, the, the Europython Society has a formal structure of a board um, who take up the full responsibility of running the society, including the conference. So I am slightly concerned that next year, because we have several uh, female board members who have been serving for a very long time who are stepping down. So I'm a bit concerned that we will not have females on the board. So if you are a female, a non-binary, if you're underrepresented, I would really love f to see many of you to step up, to consider joining the board, to make us more diverse, and in general, to make us serve the community better. So if you are around, if you're considering, you're very welcome to find me ask me questions, chat with me, and we also have a lovely group of board members who are, who are basically united behind this mission, so we are here to chat. <laughs> and of course, as I mentioned, um, this is a massive endeavor, and this takes a whole year of planning and hundreds of hours to put this together, especially nobody is paid. So I'd just like to take the opportunity to thank every single organizer who has put in so much effort. And we have Alex, uh, who organized very good community panel. Anders, who drove, well, who is our treasurer for many, many years and who is kind of stuck as our treasurer. So. Um, but, but also, uh, Anders drove all the way from Sweden with all of our stuff. So if you have used a power strip that is ours, Anders brought them there, so thank you. Um, and Artem, who is the other half of uh, the sponsorship, but also helped us with the registration board on Discord, um, talk to him to ask him to share the code with you. Um, and we also have our two, of course, most of the speakers already know, like he's provided incredible amount of support to speakers and put up a very good program, I would think. Um, and Chuk, you are always everywhere helping with everything. And I don't think there's anybody in this room who doesn't know Chuk, and thank you. <laughs> And, and thank you, Chuk, for always being an ally in diver diversity and inclusion. Um, and we have Christian, who, who is a very gentle soul, who is always there to provide support who, how, whenever people need it. And Ciro has provided incredible support to, our, to put together, um, to organize our volunteers, our on-site volunteers, who has also um, reviewed many, many proposals and provided incredible structure for the program reviewing. And Daksh is a, a new volunteer, uh, a very young volunteer. Um, and he, is, he has incredible energy and he's, I really hope that he will continue contributing to EuroPython and he has helped in many different areas including answering help desk tickets and in our communications. Um, Dan Shri actually joined EuroPython in the remote, remote EuroPython years 
And she, you, if you're an on-site volunteer, you probably have met her because she is the main person organizing, putting together the structure of on-site volunteering. And we also have Diego, who is the rock, because I think he has been in Europe, he has attended Europe since forever ago. And uh, last year, Diego had a kid, so I do not understand how he still had time to contribute in communications and program, but thank you, Diego. And uh, Elisabetta and Emma, they, they both provided, they're both Transcode volunteers. Elisabetta provided us very good um, link with the local community who also attended the Transcode event. And Jody is relatively new to volunteering, but giving us, uh, to Europython volunteering, but has provided incredible energy. And um, she is the, one of the main organizers of Humble Data. And we also have Kashishnu, uh, who joined us fairly late, but gave us a lot of good support for how to deploy the Discord bot. Lila is also a Transcode volunteer. Um, and Manny uh, helped us a lot in financial aid, and I'm incredibly sad that Manny could not be here today because we had really good plans to um, having a PyCon Africa community table, but unfortunately, a few days before the conference, we received the news that he could not be here with us due to visa issues. And Manoj, um, he's very helpful with Finnate as well. And Mia is pretty much the main reason why this conference feels like a Czech conference. Thank you, Mia. And we also have Martin, who helped a lot in operations. Nicholas Tollery, who is very helpful in providing everybody support, but also found us really lovely keynotes and very helpful in program in general. And Nico is the main reason this on-site operations runs very smoothly. And Naomi is the barometer of whether the conference is running okay. If she says it's okay, I think it's okay. <laughs> and, and Patrick, if you go to the EuroPython website, um, GitHub, you will see how many commits Patrick has done and how much improvement he has made to our website, but this year I also had the pleasure of working with him on m much of the design work with his friends, and it has always been an incredibly supportive uh, collaboration, um, thank you. And Rodrigo joined us a little bit later, but he has also provided a lot of insight in our program and also is constantly looking out for our sprints, PRs, and did an amazing job reviewing these PRs. And we have Sangar Shannon, who's traveled all the way from India. He has uh, been this, he is the main reason why we even have Twitter messages. He's always on it. <laughs> Yes. And Sylvia unfortunately cannot be with us um, in person, but uh, Sylvia has been on our CUC team for many years and always providing us with great insight on how to proceed when there are, there's problems. And she's also a great ally in our diversity efforts. And we have Schechner, who joined us last year in Dublin, and this year has done an amazing job managing the remote volunteers. Um, and did I just skip Sebastian? Yes. I will leave Sebastian at the end. <laughs> yes. um, and we have Siofanis, um, who would prefer to be called Fanis. <laughs> and he gives the best hugs. And he 
He talks to everybody. He always makes sure that everybody is okay. And I think without him, we would have not had the conference with so many teams sticking together for a whole year. And he's always, he's also the main drive behind the mentorship program. So please give a big <laughs> applause to Fanis. And of course, we have VB, who most of the speakers, you already know VB. I do not understand how VB could. Um, so this year, VB has co-led co program, also led communications, did an amazing job delegating, and also finished his master's degree all in one year. <laughs> and also gave me incredible support, always. So thank you. Um, and we have Vicky, who again cannot be with us on site. Um, Vicky was the main drive in rewriting our or updating our COC this year, and she is also on the COC committee this year. Even though Vicky cannot be with us um, on in Prague, I am sure many of you have seen her on Discord, who is always there to help every single person who has trouble when um, the main organizers on site might not um, be able to see the messages very promptly. So huge shout out to Vicky. And of course, I skipped Sebastian, who is like, if, Sebastian has led Finate with grace. And yes, I also skipped Laiz, yes. <laughs> Sebastian has really led Finate with grace and consideration. Every single applicant has been reviewed and double checked by Sebastian, answered very promptly. Um, and is just the most considerate person in our team. Um, also, <laughs> he is, if you, if you like our Discord server, he is the main drive behind this. He provided it, all of the structure, and also we have many, many pages of documentation. So we would be very, very happy to share with everybody who is interested. And I also skipped Laiz, but of course you all, you've all seen Laiz everywhere. Um, you have given EuroPython so much energy. What it, whenever I say, Laiz, can you do this? The answer is always yes, of course. And thank you. Thank you for running Humble Data. Thank you for including so many more, encouraging so many more women to be part of the conference. And yeah, just thank you so much. And, and of course, we also have many on-site volunteers and remote volunteers as part of the great effort. So if you are around, all of organizers and all of the on-site volunteers, I would really love you to come on stage and just be recognized. <laughs> Apart from our on-site volunteers, we also have many remote volunteers. I really hope that the tech will work and we will see the remote volunteers. But come on. Yes. What is this? Who is this dancing? That's Dan Shree and Dach. And Vicky. What about you, Rebecca? We need to celebrate you. Okay. Well done with the church.
I don't know where our photo, oh yeah, that's our photographer, yes. Yeah, he knows the drill, yes. I also want to take the opportunity to thank so much of our supporting staff. Just stay here, like just be with, stay on stage. Yes, um, I, I don't know whether Gonzo people are going to be close to stage, but I just want to say great thanks to our Gonzo team that, who have been with us as our AV team since 2017. And you are part of our team and part of our community. Um, and of course, thank you so much to all of our sponsors. So that's it. Thank you. And see you at the sprints. See you in the next meetups. See you in the next PyCons. And see you in the next EuroPythons. Thank you. <laughs> Good to close. Good to close. Good to close. Good to close. Now I'm going to say something. Okay? Um, uh, I would like to take a minute here to thank Raquel for being such a brilliant chair, not just for, for this year, but for the year before. She's been serving on the board for... Oh, I forgot to say something. What? Okay. Um, I, yeah, I forgot to say something. So I'm Raquel, and this is my... Uh, I've been volunteering EuroPython since 2018. This is my last year serving on the board, and it has been an incredible journey. I have learned a lot. I've made so many great friends. And so, yeah, please join us and make good friends. As you might know, I've been involved in quite a few conferences, and I can really say she was the best project manager ever. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to keep the short. Uh, thank you so much, Raquel, for everything. And um, um, some of the volunteers over here, um, they, we, we wanted to like get like a, uh, what's it called? Um, gift card? No, what's it called? No, a greetings card, a greeting card for you. But then because there are so many people who wanted to write something for you, we decided to go with the calendar. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the calendar wherein each, each month has something written by you know, one of our volunteers. And if anyone missed it, you can come up to me and you can write more. Uh, thank you so much for everything you've done. You are leaving a legacy behind. Thank you.